In this video I'm going to talk through the biggest issue affecting canners in cultivation and that is cannavirus. But what is cannavirus? Well there are several viruses that would come under the umbrella of cannavirus. There's three that I'm going to talk about today. The first one is canna yellow mottle virus, then there's bean yellow mosaic virus and canna yellow street virus. Basically all these viruses contribute to the features that you see in this canner which is affected by the virus. So some of these look okay-ish, but others you can see have yellow lines running through what should be a pure green leaf. There's distortion of the foliage, browning of the foliage where it's been all the chlor chlorophyll's gone out of parts of the leaves, it's gone yellow and then crisped over and then further down you can even see that little leaf there just the midrib left. So these viruses cause like I said mainly distortion of the leaves and they also cause breaking of the flowers so you might see white streaks in the flower which is a sign of cannavirus and also the veins that the actual colour of the leaves, where the veins go through the leaves, might be broken, you've got yellow parts showing. This is obviously easiest to see in a green leaved canna because then you can see the difference from the normal pure green. In variegated cannas, it's much, much harder to detect until you see the distortion, the poor wheat growth, and then over the years, if you do keep it, the plants come less less vigorous, they grow shorter, they may not even overwinter at all and just do stunted little growth that dies very quickly. So it is a virus we need to get rid of. So what causes a virus? Well, obviously how, well, how does it transmit? It transmits mainly by aphids. So aphids will get on the young leaves, feed on the leaves, of an infected plant and then go to an uninfected plant, feed on that and transmit the virus that way. Other ways are if you're cutting leaves with secateurs of an infected plant and then cut leaves of a well, uninfected plant then you can transmit the viruses that way. So I've moved just a little bit closer to this canna leaf so you can really see one of the main effects and that is the pale yellowing of the leaves between the veins all on this side and on this side and it varies through the plants that one's badly affected that particular leaf I mean this leaf next to it isn't really showing any issue so you might think it's okay and just old leaves dying off but it's not these new leaves as well can be yellow and it varies through the plant so some's bad on one side here not so bad on the leaf next to it but this is cannavirus. You can see that's a good spot. If you see the side of this here, it's hard to see in the sunlight, but there's actual patches of yellow between the veins of the leaves. So like I said, on a, on a green plant, a green leaved canna, it's easy to see. So distortion happens and it's something you want to get rid of. So to get rid of it, what you need to do is basically dig up this plant. So that's what I'll do next and completely remove it from your garden, so burn it ideally or bin it up and put in your normal household waste probably not a good idea to put in your garden waste because it might transmit the virus when it goes into recycling, into compost, it might still still get into other people's gardens it's best to get rid of it in household waste or burn it so that's a green one now I said there's three viruses, the yellow bean canna virus, or yellow bean virus, which affects canners, doesn't just affect canners, it, as the name implies, it, it affects beans and peas, freesias, so it affects other garden plants and therefore can be transmitted from those plants to canners, which begs the question, if you want canners in your garden that are not going to get the canna viruses, should you grow peas and beans, freesias, other plants like that that can transmit the virus. 
that is a question to think about because if you do grow peas and beans and that's got um, the yellow bean virus then it can be transmitted by aphids or by infected tools to canners. That's something to consider and that's something a lot of people aren't aware of. It can be transmitted that way between other plant types. The other two kind of viruses I had just kind of specific so it can only really be transmitted by infected plants brought in and again the aphids or the, the tools being used on those infected plants going to the, the new stock. So let's have a look at a variegated canna and show you what that looks like. So this is a variegated purple leaved canna, it is canna Durban or Phazon and thankfully this isn't affected by the canna viruses at the moment. It's got strong variegation on the leaves which is to be expected if this was infected then we might see the browning of the edges of the leaves distorted leaves and we might see the breaking up of these veins with pale patches in between eventually going brown but this plant at the moment is unaffected so if you've got one like this don't worry unless you see the distortion lack of vigor from year to year and the crisping up of the leaves due to pale parts of the leaves dying back. But as it stands, this is Canadurban and it is completely free of the virus. Now, apart from the slug damage to this canna leaf, this is a pure green leaved seed sown canna and it's got none of the canna virus, so it's got nice clean edges, no distortion in the foliage apart from where the slug damage is actually. Um, no pale areas, no broken panels between the veins. So this is a good, healthy can of plants which are growing here. But it is growing quite close to the infected plants. So I will get rid of the infected plants. So why do I mention seed sown canners? Well, most canners that you buy are from divisions or tissue culture and they're the ones that carry the virus more often than not. If you grow from seed then it's highly unlikely that it will contain the virus from the seed to, into a growing plant. It's not 100% guaranteed. It's not been proven either way that uh, the kind of virus can be transmitted from seed into a growing plant but it's, uh, it's not really been proved that it does all the cannas I've grown from seed haven't had the canna virus, so that's probably the best way to go. The trouble with growing cannas from seed is that most of them are the pale, or the, should I say, plain green varieties. So if you want the nice Durbans, the variegated ones, you have to get those from, from growing plants from divisions, because they're not viable from seed. So there's a conundrum. If you want nice interesting varieties with lots of variegation then you've got to risk buying plants which you don't know if they've got canna virus. Obviously some places sell cannas that are virus free but it's very very hard to say if they truly are and most places will have stock that's bought in, not grown themselves, not done the divisions from year and year and there's no guarantee to say it won't have the canna virus. So you need to either buy from reputable canna specialists that have grown their own stock from year to year or grow from seed. Let's make sure you haven't got the canna virus. But obviously then if you grow peas or you grow beans, there's a chance if they get infected, then it can spread to your cannas. So what's the alternative? Well, plants like cannas, you can grow bananas that don't get affected, or gingers, or grow the cannas from seed. But it's still a risk that you may, you may get the kind of virus into your plants from other people. Growing cannas are infected and then aphids transmitting the diseases to your plants. It's a bit doom and gloom really, but if you can get nice healthy plants, enjoy them while you can. And if you get infected plants, destroy them, burn them, or put them in the household waste. Hope this video helps. And finally, I should just say, this is where I've dug up the canna that was infected with canna viruses. 
And obviously I've tried to get out all the rhizomes, which I have most of the roots, all the living roots I've taken out. But obviously it wouldn't be a good idea really to, to plant a canna in this spot, or a bean, or a pea family member, or a freesia. So I plant something completely unrelated here, so there's no chance of any virus getting into the new plant. And also, the canna that I did plant here was about seven, eight years old. And it started showing the virus last summer. So it took several years before the virus got hit. So it either had the virus from the beginning when it was bought, but the vigour of the plant was such that it didn't really show much with distortion, or it's been infected by aphids in the previous few years. So either way, it just shows that you can have a kind of plant looking healthy for several years and then to come to the virus. So be very careful with canners, especially with hygiene and cross-contamination. Here's to planting other plants in its place. <laughs>